Hey guys, Ron here, and starters are probably the most controversial group of Pokemon on the internet. There may be more hated kinds of Pokemon online, but nobody can seem to agree on whether or not some starters are exactly as they should be, or could have been so much more than they already are. So in this video, I'm going to take some middle stage starters and give them split evolutions. These aren't redesigns of existing Pokemon, but rather additional new final evolved forms that showcase a different direction that these families could have gone in. If you like this concept, then please leave a like and subscribe to let me know you want to see a part 2, and perhaps give me suggestions on some more starter split evolutions. Let's begin by critiquing my favorite Pokemon, Zeptile. While it's a fairly popular starter, and Pokemon in general, there's a chance Grovile is slightly more popular, or at least few people criticize Grovile's design. It's without a doubt the most well-received middle stage starter around, and, and those who idolize it kind of believe Sceptile does not live up to their expectations, I guess. I'm trying to empathize with them. They miss that sick head leaf, don't vibe with the tree tail, and perhaps were hoping that Grovile's raptor-like uh, inspiration would have fully manifested in a final evolution. So how about we make a dinosaur-looking Grovile evolution that keeps what everybody, you know, loved about Grovile and expands upon it. He'll finally be grass dragon type, so all Hoenn starters will have a secondary typing. This won't be meant to replace Sceptile, it'll just give Grovile a new evolution in a specific region. Let's do this! So I imagine the logical next step after one giant head leaf was three smaller feather-like head leaves, but trust me, it'll, it'll go back to that one long leaf that you guys all love by the end. The point is to make this guy look like a raptor, way more primal than Sceptile, so I even give it uh, chin leaves, but that won't last either. Long, thick neck, and a less upright body, along with leaf-feathered wings. I mean, they're still arms, but when does an arm become a wing? I mean, this guy doesn't even fly. It just glides. But the point is that instead of shrubbery on his tail like a septile, it has more leaves in the front and on its arms. A more raptor version of septile's legs, and a more low-key leaf tail, since septile haters don't like its tail for some reason. I literally cannot imagine hating septile's tail. Right now, it looks too much like a Grovile, so I made its face sharper, eyes smaller, and more mature, and fixed the the proportions up a bit. Now I'm adding Grovile's colors before cooling it down a bit. To show that from Trico to Grovile to this evolution, the color scheme of the family becomes a bit bluer. It'll have an even cooler tone and sleeker head in the final version. Check out Graptor, the jungle Pokemon, a grass dragon type, from grass and raptor. This Pokemon perfectly camouflages into the dense jungle. It leaps from treetops, swiftly gliding down to attack its prey. It is more brutal than its forest counterpart, Sceptile, but it's still honorable. It keeps the peace by vigilantly looking out for poachers and those who would dare harm its environment. It can see for miles with its night vision. Its abundance of leaves allow it to absorb enough energy during its daytime slumber in order to hunt and play at night. Its thick leaf hide allows it to keep warm at night. The sharp leaf feathers on its arms make for excellent offense and defense. It has the abilities Overgrow and Infiltrator. Its shiny is identical to Sceptile's. As a Sceptile man myself, this is still pretty tight. It's everything a Grovile could be. I love the colors. I always enjoy when the final evolution of a family has darker colors, and I like how wild yet still noble looking this Pokemon is. I hope Grovile fans like it. Next is Primarina. While the backlash to its design has died down by now, it's, it's become a pretty averagely received Pokemon. There are still quite a bit of fans who think that such a feminine design doesn't match the gender ratio that it has, and would love to see a more masculine final stage Poplio. The entire fan base was totally fine with Poplio becoming a clown, so we'll continue that original motif. Male seals are way more bulky than their female counterparts, so this will be an intimidating looking sea lion seal hybrid with leopard seal spots. Clown trigger warning by the way. I'm leaning towards both sad and creepy clowns. It'll be a dark type to contrast with the fairy type of Primarina. It makes others laugh, but it isn't really the most wholesome Pokemon deep down. Keep in mind that it'll have to conform to Brion's existing design. We aren't changing the middle stage of any of these new split evolutions, so I have to make sure that our new evolution still looks like it can believably evolve from, po from Brion. It's a thick seal. Just a, just a masculine Populo. Populo? Poplio. I implemented Brion's eyelashes and made it look more like clown makeup as we go. I turned Brion's uh, ear balls into these pearls that look like a clown hair with a bald head. The rest is just a male version of Primarina's body, minus the spikes since it already looks dangerous. A clown tear to look like one of those sad clowns as, as opposed to the typically happy ones. Leopard seal spots and Primarina's star thing as a front button darker versions of Primarina's colors, but then I decided to add this black stripe along the body to tie it all together. It makes it look super dangerous. This also helps integrate the black lipstick patterns, which is what makes it look like it's perpetually smiling, but it hides its frown. Kind of like real clowns, but it also matches the black lips of leopard seals. Beware, Comma Deep, the performative Pokemon, a water dark type. 
This Pokemon has mastered the art of physical comedy. The slapstick humor this Pokemon performs is popular with children. It does not enjoy performing for adults who find its comedy lowbrow, but Comedeep will hide its true emotions. Its tear-shaped mark, along with Comedeep's perpetually perky, dark lips, make it difficult to truly understand Comedeep's true emotions. Its barking laugh produces bubbles that it can control with its voice. It often goes too far with its comedy. It will slip on ice and even slap itself in order to get a laugh. It can physically withstand the harsh conditions its own art puts it through. But Comedy will hold a grudge on those that do not crack a smile at its performance. It has a signature ability called Liquid Laugh that does exactly what Liquid Voice does. Its signature move is a physical attack called Bubbling Slap. Comedy slaps its opponent at such intense speed the water on its flipper boils on contact. It has a chance of burning the opponent and has 90 base power. The whole concept of this guy is that you never know what its true intentions are. It's performing for the sake of art, not because it's truly happy, so its actions are rarely an indication of how it feels. It's a nice concept for a dark type Pokemon in my opinion. It's unintentionally deceptive and the markings it has are kinda creepy, at, at least to me. Now I want to move on to Cinderace. While I love it now, when I first saw it, it felt like uh, the proportions were a bit too small for a final evolution. And while its overall design is exactly what I was kind of looking for and what I thought it would look like, I was holding on to the hope that Scorbunny would end up being a fire electric type. Since Scorbunny is more of a striker, which means its job is to actually stay around the goals and take shots, I'm going to base this Raboot evolution on the other football positions. It'll run around like a midfielder to highlight its electric typing and be a bit more defensive like a sweep to incorporate some more fluff into its design. Since we're making another bunny that is based on another soccer player, I want to make sure it doesn't look exactly like a Cinderace. Unlike Cinderace, this boy is serious and pretty much continues Raboot's aloof personality. I'm a Ted Lasso fan, so I imagine uh, Cinderace is, is more like Jamie Tart, and this guy is more of a Roy Kent. I gave him a dynamic pose like he's both mid-run and or revving up for a kick because it represents the midfielder position which is more versatile and active than a striker like uh, Cinderace. I continued the collar motif that Raboot has but made it fluffy like Raboot's uh, stomach pocket. Its ears are modeled after lightning but have a little uh, flame shaped ear hole. The point is that I always thought Cinderace's arms were uncannily short, so I finally made a rabbit with long arms. Especially since I have the feeling that if these Pokemon were playing alongside Cinderace, this Pokemon would be a goalie as opposed to Cinderace. Its legs and feet are also way more animalistic than Cinderace's. It has a puffy flame-shaped tail, but it's not actual fire. The patterns were tough to come up with, but eventually I made the stripes on its body look like the ones on a jersey and athletic shorts without having fur that separates the individual clothing it's supposed to mimic, like how Cinderace has fur to mimic a collar, sleeves, and pants. I streamlined the face a bit more to make it more in line with the Cinderace line, and the colors were just darker Cinderace colors with more of an emphasis on yellow now that it's electric type too. But its black patterns are also meant to mimic the extra padding and clothes players like the goalie wear. This is... Ember Rush, the midfielder Pokemon, a fire electric type. Ember Rush are incredibly versatile and pride themselves in their skill in battle. They take training and even leisure play very seriously. They do not make unnecessary moves and never showboat. The pads on their feet produce sparks that give this Pokemon its insane speed. Its reflexes are among the highest in the Pokemon world. Its thunderous kicks leave scorch marks in its wake. It will kick burning pebbles with impeccable aim. Ember Rush defends its territory by rushing its opponent in teams. It will overwhelm its foe with its relentless speed. It has the hidden ability, Electric Surge. Its signature move is an electric version of Pyro Ball called Lightning Ball, which can paralyze. Its shiny is sick. I want that on my team. This is exactly what I imagined Scorebunny's final evolution was going to look like. I bet if this came out before Cinderace, it would be way better received as a Scorebunny final evolution. But what do I know? And finally, one that isn't totally necessary, but still interesting, Fraligator. While I love this Pokemon, and it may be one of the least criticized starter Pokemon around, some view it as a missed opportunity to not incorporate Croconaw's caveman aesthetic. So what if I made a Croconaw evolution that looked even more intimidating and kept the Fred Flintstone drip? It'll be a rock type too, and look more like a crocodile that crawled out of a dank cave. It's a Feraligator with a longer snout and craggy rock lower jaw. The spikes on his head are more triangle-like to mimic the whole trope of cavemen having hair held together by a bone. It's quadrupedal and its front legs are massive, since they are covered in rocks. Its hunch is also more pronounced. The rock on its belly is supposed to mimic the traditional caveman clothes that even Croconaw wears, but it's hard to tell in this angle. Just finalizing the sections, I even made its tail look like a crude weapon an early human would use. The colors are just darker for alligator. And I originally wanted to name it Croc Magnon instead of Cro Magnon, like early humans, but it sounded like a stretch. So, take a look at Crocolith, the mangled Pokemon. 
a water rock type. Crocoliths' ever-growing rock jaw can pierce iron. If a substance is particularly sturdy, Crocolith will slash it with its sharp claws. Crocolith files its claws under pressurized water. Crocolith are surprisingly gentle, but ruthless in battle. They live in wet caves. Its long snout can access small cracks filled with nutritious water. It will run at its opponents with its mighty arms clawing at the ground. Even if prey manages to pry itself from Crocolith's jaw, Sharp rocks will stay embedded inside Crocolith's prey, slowing them down and eventually inflicting enough damage for Crocolith to catch up. Crocolith have the hidden ability Strongjaw and a new move called Slurry Crunch, a physical move that does 50 base damage where Crocolith bites its opponents, embedding sharp rocks that will reduce the foe's HP by his 16th every turn. It's shiny is also my kind of shiny. How can I not love this Pokemon? I mean, look at it. I don't know if I succeeded in making it look too different from Feraligator, but that, that was tough since it still has to look like it can evolve from Crocona. Leave a like if you enjoyed any of the evolutions I made today. Subscribe for more Fakemon content, possibly a part 2 if you liked it that much. Check out my other fake Pokemon creation videos and the description for the music I used and my Patreon where you can get cool rewards like seeing my videos days early and a huge discount on the t-shirts I made for you guys. Clicking the join button will get you the same perks too. Follow me on Twitter where I post sneak peeks and final art of these creations as well. Bye!